I think I'll go for a stroll. All right. Marion. And it disappeared. When the daughter woke up, there was no sign of her. Who's handling it? The Cypriot police at that end. The MI5 are sniffing around here. So we're not directly involved? No. But a top missile engineer has gone missing on a foreign station. He's retired now, isn't he, Colby? From government work, yes. He's a university professor now, aeronautical engineering or something. So he's unlikely to be able to give the Russians anything they don't already know. The Russians aren't the only bogeymen in the world. No. All the same. Why should anyone snatch Colby when you can buy missiles off the shelf these days? Sir, I am not agitating to take an interest, merely reporting the situation. Well, let's stay out of it for the present. Suits me. Feel him. Yes, yes. Let's not tell him. Neil! Yes? Wanted in the ops room. Problem? Could be, sir. A signal from Damascus Station. It's a rumor flying around the Russian technical advisor has gone missing. Name of Yogorov. What has your God of advice on? Missile guidance systems. And Colby specialised in missile engines. So if you can make it fly, and you can guide it. All you need is a lump of high explosive at the sharp end. Cyprus and Syria. But from where? PFLP, sir. No, they get all their stuff from Libya. Oh. All right, Bruce, start digging the Colby business, all the details you can find. Right, sir. Thanks. Thanks, I'll let you have it back later on this morning. No rush, she's got plenty to do. Can't do much. Morning, Laura. Good morning, sir. What's that, light reading? Tokyo Station Report of Proceedings. Enjoy fairy stories, then. Oh, you're going out? Yes, I've got an appointment. Where? Over in the other building. I didn't make it. No, I did. Forgot to tell you. Sorry, one more. So where will you be if I need you? Philip Jeremiah. The psychiatrist? Yes. Laura Dickens. A man you send back too. Oh. I know who she is. <clears throat> and, uh, what about her? She's got a hang-up of some kind. I need to know what it is. She has no hang-up that would affect her performance as a sandbagger. That's for me to say. Well, I'm the psychiatrist, Neil. And I'm the director of operations. Special section's my responsibility. Very well. <clears throat> Laura Dickens. Brought up very strictly. Very correctly. Public school. Finishing school, university, degree in languages, straight into the yes, diplomatic well, I know service. All that. She was dominated by her parents and told that all men are beasts, that sex is simply for the propagation of the species. In this day and age? Well, she's 28. We're talking about 10, 15 years ago. Anyway, the upshot of it was that she had no experience of men at all. And the longer she put off that experience, the more horrific became the prospect. But she got married? Mm, 15 months ago. <laughs> because she thought she should. Late 20s. On the shelf, time to do her duty and give her parents grandchildren. How long did the marriage last? About a week. She went back into the foreign office and applied for economy to the Secret Service. The rumour at the field school was that she's a lesbian. She isn't. Do you want some tea? No. How would she react to kindness? How do you mean? Or say a dinner invitation. Oh. Professional query, this, is it? Well, can she be asked after dinner or not? Don't try to hustle her into bed. Incurable romantic, aren't you? All I'm saying is that it could be months. Years, maybe never. Anything for me? Yes, sir. Colby in Cyprus. Seven weeks ago, Colby's daughter, uh, Marion, met a young Greek Cypriot Adonis in London and she fell for him. A pickup? Yes. Now, this Adonis character said that he had to get back to Cyprus, but he could fix free air tickets for Marion and her father, and why didn't they come out for a holiday? Colby's a widower. Yes. Marion persuaded him, and they went to Cyprus. And as soon as Colby disappeared, so did Adonis. What about your god Oh, he's uh, gone all right. It must be a second snatch, because the Russians are looking for him. Do we think the Russians know about Colby? There's no indication that they do. I think we're a lap ahead now. A lot of good it'll do us. Colby and Yogorov could be anywhere in the world by now. Ask both sandbaggers to meet me in my office, will you? Right, sir. 
You see, if Colby had anything to offer them, we would suspect a KGB snatch. Or his voluntary defection. Yeah, but you've got to have been snatched too. There's got to be a third party involved. Yes, but who? Some emergent nation with the will to make missiles, but not the know-how. Well, then why set up the snatches for the Eastern Med? Egypt, Israel, Libya, No, Jordan. they've got missiles. They can get more very easily. It's got to be somewhere close to Cyprus. Exactly. And there's nowhere closer than Cyprus itself. Cyprus? Why not? I mean, why should anyone kidnap missile engineers when it's easy enough to buy missiles at a corner shop? Yeah, but anybody wanting to smuggle missiles into Cyprus is going to have a hell of a problem. The UN peacekeeping force, Greeks and Turks spying yes, on each other. But if you build missiles inside Cyprus, you won't have much smuggling to do. Who would want missiles in Cyprus? Greek Cypriot National Front. Could be, yes. They want to get the Turks out of the north. And the Turks won't go despite UN resolutions. Well, missiles are big leave. Well, not anymore. And the National Front isn't short of money. Mm. And one of us had better get out there. <laughs> If we can convince them upstairs, there's not a shred of evidence. Nor likely to be. If it is the National Front, they're going to sit very tight and very quiet. number two? Yes, sir. Charles Norwich. What was he doing? Going home to lunch. Did he have a lead in the Colby business? Nothing. Then why kill him? Points a finger at Cyprus where there was no real indication before. Yes, it seems a crazy thing to do, but they've done it. And you're sending Kane? Yes, sir. On this evening's flight. What are you doing about a replacement number two for the station? I'll try and get him on the same plane. Where's he coming from? Have to be the school. Baptism by fire, isn't it? Someone straight from the school. Yes, but he needs to be Greek and Turkish speaking, and there isn't an experienced field officer available. Well, I hope Kane can look after him. I'm telling you, I'm not accepting. Calm down, Willie. Are you daft or deaf? Neither. The school are replacing Norwich with a female field officer. So what? God almighty, I mean, it's bad enough I have a nursemaid in you number two, but a woman straight out of training. Laura's a woman straight out of training, and she's a sandbagger. Yes, I should say Laura. No, you need a Greek speaking officer I with can you. Use the head of station. He's got to stay in Nicosia as the link. But Laura, I trust some bird straight out of training. I don't, and if it is a Greek Cypriot it, national. That's front. just a theory. I have only got two sandbaggers, and I am not committing both of them to Cyprus. Why did they kill Norwich? It makes no sense unless they want us to go to Cyprus. Instead of where? I don't know. But if it's a diversion, I'll need Laura. I'll go and brief. Draw arms on station. You know what I think about guns? They're playing it rough. Whoever they are. Get me Laura Dickens' phone. Right. Why should the National Front, or whoever it is, kill Norwich, invite us into Cyprus? Perhaps he saw something. Didn't recognise it, but they thought he must have done. Perhaps. Oh, look, um... Could you take that negative down to photographic? Ask them to do me something like a 10 by 8 blow-up. Mm-hmm. When do you want it? Close the play today. Rush job, then. Isn't everything? Ferris. Oh, I was getting worried about you. Sorry, there was a snag on my passport. You've been abroad before, have you? Once or twice. Well, at least you recognise me. Your photo's on file at the school. Mm. Well, I've aged a lot since then. Pretty much start getting home sooner in the evenings, you know. My garden is like a jungle. Sorry, Neil, was there something else? Kane's on his way. Good. Let's hope he can get results. I think you will. I phoned the head of station this evening. Oh, yes? Hugh Douglas? Told him to drop word of Kane's arrival in a National Front year or two. Does Kane know that? He suggested it. A bit risky in the circumstances? Very. If the opposition is trigger happy, Kane could get himself killed. He knows that too.
Will you keep Yegorov or let him go? Uh, keep him. He might have trade value against one or two people we'd like to get out of Russia. Might even defect to us. Sorry, Jill, this one's friendly. Hugh Douglas, head of station. Jill Ferris, new number two. Hello, sir. The name's Hugh. Well, at least you're better looking than Kane. You all right, Willie? We were followed from the airport. Where are you? That means the word's got through. Burnside said you didn't like automatics. I do like guns. How about you? I was trained on a 38 Smith & Wesson. Ah, anything to oblige a lady. Well, go easy with them, won't you? The local police get very nervous. Hmm, all right. Did you get me a car? I brought Charlie's over. Hmm. How are his wife and kids? His wife's under sedation. His kids are with my wife. Anything I can do? You just concentrate on staying alive. Downing Street. Yes, sir. The Prime Minister would be grateful to know the state of progress of the Cyprus operation. Well, I've replaced Norwich and I put a sandbag on station. And what's the result on this one, Neil? The last thing we need in the Eastern Mediterranean is a civil war. Well, Kane is probably the best special agent currently operating anywhere in the world. Which will look very good on Kane's annual report, but less pertinent on my reply to the Prime Minister. We're doing everything we can. Sandbag or two? I'm holding in reserve. Why? I'd rather have my sandbaggers killed one at a time than both together. Think it'll come to that? This is the first time I've armed Kane in over a year. He's closing up. Right. If it does come to a shootout, I want one of them alive. And both of us. Remember it. Use that rifle up there. Okay. your live one. You sure he's out of action? Sure. How many? There's one, I think. The rifle up there. Keys aren't in this thing, are they? No, I looked. Anyway, Chummy would take us while we got in and turned it. And maybe somebody else will come along. No chance. It wasn't planned by an amateur. They'll have road closed signs up at both ends. So what now? Well, we could get out of here on foot. I'm not carrying our live one, we couldn't. No. Maybe that's the point of the exercise. How good are you with a rifle? Tell me the truth. Oh, good enough. You better be. Look, I'm going for the front of our car, draw his fire. With any luck, you may get a glimpse of him. No, I'll go. If it's snap shooting, you're probably better than me. All right. To get the bodies out of sight, I'll move the car. Right.
Usually the first thing they do when they come round is throw up. You search the bodies? Yeah, nothing. Who are you? Who are you working for? You're trying me, Creek? Paul Gazas Day. My name is Angelos. Who is your boss? Where can I find him? I do not know. I was hired by the others. I don't think he understands. They're not the police. You don't tell me, I'll kill you. If I do tell you, Apollo will kill me. Who's Apollo? I don't know who he is, or where he is. Where are the engineers, the Englishman and the Russian? I don't know. Get him. No, 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 no. Where are Kolbe and Yegorov, the engineers? I don't know. I don't know. Yes? Leave him. Enough killing for one day. Come on. We're alive, Willie. Yeah. We're alive. If it bothers you that much, why do you do it? It's not always like this, you know. I can't remember the last time I killed a man. I never killed a man at all. Just make sure you don't get to like it. Is there a danger of that? Not for me. I never. So what do you have to tell me? Well, that depends on where you're taking me for lunch. You're taking me. Come on, you think my information's free? All right, what's he got? Does the name Yuri Grisham mean anything to you? KGB, head of their executive action section. See what I mean, Neil? You're just that little bit out of date. Huh? Grisham's dead. Killed in Cyprus two days ago. In Cyprus? Looking for Yagorov, I suppose. What do you know about Yagorov? Oh, about as much as I know about Professor Ronald Colby. Anything else? Yeah. Try the Greek Cypriot National Front. You're only 24 hours too late. So who's perfect? You do know the National Front's planning something pretty big. They want to push the Turks right out of their federated state and into the sea. Who's leading the push? No answers on that one. And Colby and Yagana? Not even a whisper. Yes, but who is Apollo? It's a code name for one of the top men in the National Front. Go on. Well, there's no description of him, no ideas on his real identity. He's been around since the Limassol Police Station raid in 1970, but I can't even buy information about him. Hugh, if we don't get a lead soon, we're going to be in very big trouble. Mm -hmm. But we don't know where to look. How big is this island? Oh, well, it's 140 miles long by about 60 miles away. And it's... somewhere on it, there's a factory capable of building missiles. Yes, but it won't look like a factory, you see. I mean, it's too easy to check those out one by one. Could be anywhere. It couldn't be anywhere. I mean, it won't be in the Turkish military area, will it? It's going to be somewhere reasonably close to it. If you have your factory near to the missile sites, best chance of discovery when you ferry them out. And the sites? They're on the north-facing slopes of the Trudos Mountains to squirt down on Kyrenia. No, oh, it's a lot of guess for It's it. a start. It's one that you should have made days ago. Right, I'll get out the maps. All right, I'll come with you. I want to find Burnside. Anything I can do? I know. Concentrate on staying alive. Yeah. William? Hi, boss. Hugh Douglas is getting off the hot word, everything we've done today, but I wanted a private word about my new girlfriend. Isn't she coming up to scratch? On the contrary. She's terrific. She's even better than the little girl I left at home. Are you sure? Very sure. We had a heavy session today, and she knew exactly what to do every time. She's no virgin. A very experienced lady. It's all beginning to fit. But I can double-check at this end, ask a teacher. What's she look like? She's 27, 5 feet 8, brown hair, brown eyes. OK. What do you want to do about it? Nothing. I mean, I'd be daft to lose it before the holiday's over. Right, agreed. Take care, will you? Thanks. Yes, Neil? The new Cypress number two. Yes? Jill, um, Ferris? No. According to Willie, she's a highly experienced special agent. What? And given that this is a job to recover an Englishman and a Russian, we're running a joint operation with the KGB. What? Are you sure Willie hasn't flipped his lid? He should know. Do you remember Jill Ferris at the school? Yes, quiet girl. Describe her. Small, 
About 23 or 4. Dark brown hair, a bit plain. Right, different person. We thought the KGB didn't have the connection between Colby and Yagorov, but they did. Grishin, their number one, was in Cyprus ahead of us. Got close and got killed. So they had to allocate another special agent. And then some bright lad in the KGB had an idea. Why not get SIS to do some of the work? So the KGB gun Norwich to make sure that we were involved. Right. But they had to wait to see who we'd select as our new number two, and they obviously weren't expecting a girl. <laughs> that must have been a hell of a rush for them. They flew her in from Moscow. Where else? No wonder she was late. And our Jill Ferris? Taken out along the way. Well, that's security's problem, not mine. They must be desperate to get you gone off. No more than we are to get Colby. But they've gone to a hell of a lot of trouble. To make the operation easier. There are a lot of bonuses from working with us. Back up on station, they haven't anyone in Cyprus. Willie on the job, they haven't anyone better. And first-hand information on where we got to and what we're doing. And maybe an agent in our station organisation for as long as possible. Maybe. <sighs> well, what now? We let them work together. She sounds like the best possible backup for Willie, so we may as well use him. Until the crunch. That's it. Then he grabs Colby and Jigorov. Look, I'm worried about Willie. About the whole Cyprus operation. I'd like to talk it through with you, but I haven't any more time now. Mind having supper with me tonight? I don't mind working late. You don't have to feed me. I'd like to. I'd like that too. I know it should be long dresses and candlelight, but uh, I'm a bit nervous about eating in public places these days. I'll tell you one thing. There'd have been a lot of debate about who sat with his back to the door. Anyway, makes a nice change from having only a bottle of wine for company. Aren't you married? Nobody's ever asked me. Would you like to think? Sometimes, when I'm on my own in the flat. Yeah. And out on that mountain road today, it's just as well I'm not. It frightened me too. Oh. It's not so much the fear. I mean, you can get just as frightened driving down the motorway. The violence? I suppose so, yeah. I mean, it happens so rarely nowadays. And I always try to kid myself it won't happen again. Well, of course it will. It's a violent world, Willie. Hijackings, kidnaps, bombings, assassinations. Sometimes there's no other answer. Well, maybe it's that that gets to me, the inevitability of it. And the fact that these things seem to go in cycles. In what way? Well, we had three and a half years without losing a sandbagger. And in the last month, we've lost two. That's two out of three. We'll make it. I'm glad you're around. So am I. Coffee, brandy. Have you got some at your place? Yes. Well, why don't we go there? It's on the way and it's cheaper. I hate to think what the door's going to be here. Well, I don't do this very often. No. Why did you do it tonight? I wanted to spend an evening with you. Thank you. And to share my worry about Willie. You don't often share your worries, do you, Neil? Well, not many people understand them. Not many people understand you. No, they're complicated. No, just shy. What time would Douglas be here in the morning? By eight. With answers in all the places I picked out on the map. You hope? It'd be better. If we don't make a move soon, Burnside's going to think we're on a honeymoon. That's a nice thought to sleep on. Mm. My doctor said I mustn't get excited. Good night, Willie. Good night. Go through. Thank you. Let me take your coat. Oh, thank you. Let's sit down. I have seen that before, you know. Sorry. The photograph of your wife. When you get to my age, you're entitled to behave like a schoolboy. <laughs> Where did you get it? It's the mug shot from your file. I had it blown up. It ought to be blown up. It's absolutely ghastly. I like it. Mm. 
you know, if you'd wanted a photograph, you could have asked for one. Go then. I think so. The ops, I'm at home. You wouldn't have taken fright. Not for myself. For me? It's easy to put a photograph on a shelf and weave a dream. Is it a dream? Oh, I don't know. I have my fantasies too, but then I've had those before. Some dreams come true given time. A lot of time. I am prepared for that. There... Mm. I'm sorry. You know about my past? Yes. <laughs> well, I thought you would. There's a chance that... <laughs> Wait until you've tasted my coffee. A oh, damn thing. There's got to be. You can't build missiles in your coal cellar. Well, I've shipped everything up there from uh, holiday chalets to a nut house to a power nut station. House. Well, it's a clinic, asylum, sanatorium, whatever you want to call tell it. Tell me about that. Well, there's nothing to tell. It belongs to a Swiss concern. Zurich, I think. The street, expensive. It's a place for rich families to lock up their needed offspring. Sunshine and mountain air for 200 quid a week. Mm, maximum security? What? Does it have a high wall, a high fence, guards, that sort of thing? Yes. I see what you mean. Yeah, it's not a bad idea, is it? Pretend to be keeping people in. It's the same thing as keeping people out. Except it does belong to a Swiss organisation. Oh, I check that. Apollo isn't likely to fly the Greek flag over it, is but he? where is it? Show me. Ah, uh, it's here. Uh, yesterday we left Nicosia. We came along this road here. Must have looked then like we were headed straight for it. Mm. Hence the very determined attempt to stop us. I could contact the local police. Well, it is a kidnap. Do you think the National Front hasn't penetrated the police? We're going to a recce by a roundabout route. Right, you get a fresh signal off to Burnside, ask him what I do next. And tell him I don't fancy taking on the National Front with two guns. Mr. Ross, sir. Hi, Neil. Got insomnia, have you? And I've been doing lots of work for you all day. Thanks. Gotta prove I earned my lunches. Yes. The man you want is code name Apollo. I know. Would he also know that he operates out of some place in the Trudas Mountains? I think you've just confirmed Willie's theory, which is bad news for him. But he's located Colby? He may have. One action backup can you give me, other? When? Today, tomorrow at the latest. I don't know. I'd have to check with Langley. Are they task Athens to provide? Yeah, they might, but uh, you'd only get one officer. Okay, maybe two. That's yes. Well, how many do you want, Neil? A dozen. PMs or special agents. Are you kidding? They need White House approval for that. Diane. Hello. Find out what C's movements are this morning, will you? Let me know if he's going to leave the building. I've done that. He's in all day. Good. i got to have backup in Cyprus. What happens if you don't get it? Some hospital. It's more like a concentration camp. Top of the fence is electrified? Oh, it's electric fencing, floodlights. Well, never heard of a place that size being surrounded by two people. Mm. And if we can see, say, six guards in the daytime. Trouble the number you first thought of? And the rest. What we need now is a glimpse of Colby or Yagorov. You wait a week for that, they know we're around. If they don't show either engineer, Willie, over there to the left. An old friend. Angelos. And if Angelos is there... Right, get to a phone, call Douglas. He can confirm it to London. You're a clever boy, Willie King. Do you think so? I was praying it was going to be the wrong place. So what do you want? A dozen SAS or Royal Marines. Operating on Cypriot soil. We could fly them into one of the sovereign bases. They'd have to advance from there, armed. An act of aggression in an independent republic. We've no choice. Then we'll have to find one. Look, I don't mind getting my backside kicked all round Downing Street if there's the slightest chance of success. The Prime Minister won't have forgotten the Egyptian raid on Larnaca. Oh, that was different, sir. It wasn't. That was the risk of their own nationals with armed troops. Exactly the same. And they were shot up by the Cypriot National Guard. With no end of embarrassment and political furore. And we can't have that in Cyprus. By the 1960 Treaty of Guarantee, Britain, Greece and Turkey reserved to themselves the right to maintain the territorial integrity of the island. Well, that didn't stop the Turks invading in 74. Something which we condemned roundly at the time. I'm sorry, Neil, I know my Prime Minister. There's no way he's going to let the British Army carry out an armed raid in Cyprus. What about the special projects team? As far as the PM is concerned, the SPT is a military unit. The same applies. CIA? No. Asked. 
No, I'm afraid there's no alternative. We'll ask the Foreign Office to inform the Cyprus government. But they'll task the National Guard, and we know the National Guard's riddled with front supporters. Corbyn, you got off will disappear before the National Guard have got their boots on. All right. We haven't the manpower to carry out a covert operation. We won't get permission to mount a military raid. If we go through the proper channels, we'll lose Colby, so we needn't bother. It may be unfair to remind you, Neil, but over the past few months, you've been insistent to the point of arrogance that you're the one with the expertise in operations. I'd like a feasible solution by a close of play today. Understood, sir. A feasible solution? Let me go. No. I should be there. No. Come off it, boss. That wasn't part of the deal. What? To protect me. I'm a sandbagger. I am not protecting you. I'm protecting the section. Get both of you killed out there and I've no special ops capability at all. Then withdraw Willie. Let the Russian lady work it out for herself. I can't. No one wants the special section. He makes the government nervous. It worries he. And if I withdraw him now... You know, if Willie was paid 20,000 a year, I'd tell him to get on with it and earn his money. But every time I fight on sandbaggers' pay, I'm told there's nothing special about them. They spend half their life sitting in the hutch pushing paper. I've always argued it's not what they do, but what they may have to do come the crunch. Well, the crunch has come now. And I find it very hard to tell Willie to go out and kill himself at civil service rates. I think Douglas must have raided the war museum for these. You can stay here if you want to. I get afraid in the dark. like Douglas to find the only honest power station worker in Cyprus. Someone offered me 200 pounds. I threw the switch for 10 minutes. When those lights go out, they'll know it's us. No, they won't be sure. the ambulance. Okay, check it. Keys are in, that'll do fine. Right, stage two. Where are the engineers? Colby, you got him. Engineers. Who any making he? Colby, you got him. Tell us the truth. Where are the engineers? 
Over there. The room. Over there. With your line. I swear it. Okay. Stage three? Yeah. How much time have we got? Not enough. Well, then I'll get on with it. Professor Colby? Yes? You're English. You all right? Yes, perfectly. Well, I, I'm a bit excited, I imagine. That's nice. Is that your Gaurav? Yes. He doesn't speak English. Now, listen, when we get outside, there may be the odd gun around, so keep very low and do as I tell you. Yes, yes, of course. Now, come along, old chap. Right. Now, when I give the word... Get out! Just a shoulder wound. It's more shock, I think, than anything. All right, get in the ambulance. Come on, Professor, the police could be here in a minute. You can drive a car. Yes. And make sure you aren't stopped. You couldn't explain your plug. I'm on my way back to Moscow. Off you go. How long would you know him? Almost from the beginning. It's in the eyes. You can't hide it. I'm taking your Gorov. You're holding the guns? Those are my orders. He wasn't snatched out of Syria. He sold himself to Apollo. And he'd work willingly for the West. Well, I don't know. I mean, he wasn't a prisoner. But we are. Prisoners? They wouldn't understand, would they? No. They wouldn't understand. Well, off we go. What was that? I think the lady saved herself an airfare. Reporting back for duty, sir. How's the shoulder? Bit painful. Like your performance in Cyprus. What? Have you kept your mind on the job instead of falling for a KGB agent? I did everything I could. Then your report's a lie. Is this it? Should be right. You were alone with Colby and Yugorov while she made a dummy run with the ambulance. Hmm? You didn't think to put a bullet in Yugorov, blame it on the opposition? No. Well, you damn well should have. With your Gaurav dead and out of the way, she'd have kept her cover, stayed on as the Cypress number two, and we could have fed her false information. Uh, I didn't think of it. I mean, in the middle of a gun battle, I didn't think of it. She was the most... And I just happened to 
think that I owed her more You than... owe her nothing. She's KGB, your SIS. Yeah, never the twain shall meet. Don't forget it again.